Oh, hello there. We had an exciting September bar show, and we'll be reacting to it with gentle good humor, because old is in. Soft throw. Hello, we are back. Sorry for the delay. Things have been uh, very busy on the work front, which is awesome. But it also means I have not had a lot of days off. But we are back here in New York, uh, and I have a day off. So I'm ready to get back to the sumo. We had an incredible September Basho. First of all, uh, last Basho, obviously, Kyujo was the entire story of the Basho. But this one, not as much of a factor. Yes. Abi and Terunofuji both went Kyujo at various points during the tournament, but overall, a very healthy tournament. And our winner, Tamawashi. He gets his second Yusho. Uh, this is amazing. I'm very, very happy for him. I think he's put a lot of work in. He's been there for so long. And uh, yeah, excellent consistency seems to be being rewarded in his case. He, of course, is the oldest rikishi in the modern era to ever win a Yusho now. Uh, his stable, the Kata Onami stable, only has, I think, four or five wrestlers. He's the only Sekatori, anyway. So uh, just the fact that this, like, uh, grizzled veteran managed to pull out another beautiful Yusho in the twilight, of, twilight maybe, of his career. But the oldest man on the Banzagai manages to pull this out. It was a wonderful thing to watch. And like his first Yusho, this one was also well-deserved. He fought mostly a full Sanyaku slate and dominated basically his entire way through, getting a 13-2, and two, one better than I thought the champion was going to get. His only losses were to the two Onami brothers, Wakataka Kage and Wakamoto Haru. More on them later. And like his first Yusho, there were Yokozuna available, and he beat them. Tamawashi now has Kinboshi in four of his last five tournaments. He seems to be one of the few people who can consistently beat Terra no Fuji. Now, I don't think this is uh, presaging some sort of very late career Ozeki run for Tamawashi, no. But I do think this is going to get him up into the Sanyaku, uh, if not Sekiwake, although there is precedent for that. If you look back to Tochi Notions, you show at Maigashira 3, half a rank below where Tamawashi was, promoted all the way to Sekiwake. But there's going to be a lot of Sekiwake Komasubi traffic that we will definitely talk about in a second. But I think Tamawashi has definitely earned Sanyaku promotion. <laughs> And of course, falling short on the last day, once again, Takeyasu. Oh. Now, we discussed this the last time Takeyasu had a heartbreaking junior show. Check it out up there. Uh, we discuss it. Compare him to Pearl Jam in 96. Check it out. It, it sort of explains what my feelings are for him. I think we are a little bit past his prime. Uh, and I don't think we're really going to see another championship-level push out of him. Maybe another junior show? Unfortunately, I think we are well past Takeyasu's best sumo at this point. Now, oddly enough... Six Jun Yusho without a tournament win is not the record. Uh, the most I could find was Ozeki Yutakiyama, no relation. Uh, he fought in like the 60s and 70s. He had eight Jun Yusho with no Yusho. And then you started looking through some of the Banzake he was involved with, and like, oh yeah, he lost half of them to Taiho, and he lost his final one to Tamano Umi. Tamano Umi, of course, we did a whole episode on, and coincidentally, he was one of the first recruiting class of the Kata Onami stable, Tamawashi's stable. Integration and synergy. This is, in fact, the second time recently Takeyasu has had a Junyusho, and both have come after a COVID Kyujo. Quick sidebar. So I think we've had enough COVID Qjos to sort of start having an idea of does this end up having a positive or negative effect on the Rikishi who end up having to go Qjo for COVID. And what I'm noticing is unless they have a lot of symptoms and we are hearing that they themselves are very symptomatic and involved with COVID, uh, it doesn't seem to affect them much as they come back. In fact, a lot of the uh, small sample size, admittedly, evidence we have is that it seems to be helping. 
Takayasu now twice has bounced back incredibly strongly after an extra Basho of rest. Ichi Nojo just won a tournament after a COVID Kujo. Tobizaru, who we're going to talk about in a second, had an amazing tournament after a COVID Kujo. But also, when you have as many COVID Kujos as we had last tournament, you can easily point to Kota Nawaka, who, after his strong start last Basho, a little underwhelming here. Mitake Yumi had the, I guess what we'd call the dead cat bounce from last tournament to this tournament, did not do well at all. So if we are trying to build an argument that says more rest would lead to better sumo, I would say this is a fairly soft data point in the more rest is better for the wrestlers camp. What do you think? Quick sidebar. I ended up going about 50-50 on some of my predictions, did pretty well on my idea that I didn't think there was going to be anyone dominant in the Sanyaku. I said only one person in the Sanyaku was going to get more than 10 wins. That ended up happening, Wakataka Kage. But I also said that the Sanyaku was going to get 80% Kachikoshi, and I was not even close on that. So we're going to have some shakeups in the Sanyaku. Uh, Obviously, Terry Nafuji at Yokozuna, gonna hang out there. Uh, he went Kyujo this time. He's gonna have surgery. He's probably gonna be Kyujo for November, hoping for a very strong recovery. See you in January, buddy. The Ozeki, oh, oh, they did not really, mm. All right, so Takakesho got a 10 and five. That's a real solid score. There was the Henka against Hoka de Fuji. And I'm always, as of course, torn on the Henka issue. As a sports person, I'm like, yes, I think we should try to de-emphasize the Tachia. I think it is better for the wrestlers in the long term. But as a lover of theater, having a Henka on the last match of the day, when it's, it's the leader guy, ah, it's bad theater good tactics. And our other two, Matakayumi and Shodai, ooh, both 4 and 11. I was wrong. I thought Shodai was going to have a bounce back. I thought Matakayumi was going to have a bounce back. They did not. Uh, this is going to bump Matakayumi down a rank. Uh, Shodai is now, instead of just regular Ozeki, he's now Kadaban Ozeki. And we are going to have to see if he's going to be able to pull yet another magical tournament to bump him back out of that. Magical. Kachi Koji. But considering last tournament, that looks far away at this point. So, who else in the Sanyaku might have a shot at Ozeki? We're due to update the Ozeki ranking soon, but a quick preview will be, hey, Wakataka Kage is still excelling at Seki Wake. Just not quite to the level we need for an Ozeki promotion. <laughs> he got an 11 and four this time. Uh, he keeps having these slow starts and the one Basho where he didn't ha lose like three out of his first five, he ended up winning the Yusho. So once he can get past these early day, I guess jitters, maybe it just takes him a little while to ramp up, whatever it is, but once he can get past that, then maybe we can talk about a breakthrough. I do think he is at the point where he may not be getting like a a 33 over three Ozeki run. He may be getting more like what Asano Yama had. And by an Asano Yama promotion, uh, remember Asano Yama's Yusho was not part of his Ozeki run. He won his tournament at Magashi Irit, bumped up, did not do that well, got a seven and eight, bumped back down, then jumped back up into the Joy and up into the Sanyaku and got like four consecutive tens and 11s. And then they were like, oh, that's cool. I think that will be the path for Wakataka Kage, unless we are in a serious situation where we might have fewer than to Ozeki and Yokozuna, but I don't think we need to worry about that for a little bit. But the bottom line is with Wakataka Kage, the guys had seven consecutive Kachikoshi, four have come in the Sanyaku, he's the most likely next Ozeki at this point. And definitely in the conversation, and for similar reasons, Hoshoryu. He just got an eight and seven. He's had four consecutive Kachikoshi in the Sanyaku. That's all amazing, but it's the way that he's doing it that I find fascinating. The Sanyaku, the guys who he's sort of been facing the past four tournaments, all up there, he's been getting better at them. He finished five and one against them, but he finished three and six against the Maegashira below him. And to be fair, there was a lot of Maegashira excellence in this tournament, including Tamawashi, who beat Hoshoryu. I think the next step for Hoshoryu, and again, I'm going to say his breakthrough tournament comes in March or May of next year, where he puts it all together and gives us a real strong double-digit charge up in the Sanyaku. So many planes today. Now, our Komasubi did not do quite as well. Kiribayama, 9 and 6. He's probably going to hold there. But then we end up having, like, Abi, who had the Kyujo. So he's going to take a big trip down the Banzuke, hopefully coming back very strong with double-digit wins down in the lower part of the Banzuke. 
and Ichi Nojo. Yeah, I predicted this one. I, I didn't think he was going to come back really super strong. I was expecting somewhere between seven and nine wins, and he got six. Uh, so a little under expectations, but isn't that sort of the way Ichi Nojo is? <laughs> So, it looks like we're still going to have a 10-man Sanyaku in the next tournament. Abi and Ichi Nojo, gonna drop out. Uh, we're going to have Mitake Yumi and Daesho each dropping one rank each, but they're not going to drop out of the Sanyaku. But, Tamawashi and, I believe, Tobizaru, a 10 and 5 at Maegashira 1, are going to bump their way up into the Sanyaku next tournament. The only question I have is whether or not they're going to go with, like, for Sekiwake and two Komasubi, or how the division is going to work out, but I'm pretty sure those are going to be our ten. And speaking of Tobizaru, it's time for Uncle Sumo's Attaboys. <laughs> And starting off the list of attaboys, Tobizaru, 10 and 5 at Magashira 1. Uh, I probably should have dropped this before, but let's drop it now. Yep, J-Wags was really wrong about the Magashira's one. Tobizaru got a 10 and 5. I expected probably the reverse of that. Tobizaru was looking strong. He had a Kimboshi in this tournament. He's up there in the joy, facing off with people like up here. So excited about this, interested to see if he can keep up a Sanyaku presence. And also at my Gashira one, and also equally as wrong, Midori Fuji. Now, I rarely give attaboys to losing records, but a 7 and 8 when you are literally the underdog in every single match for 15 days. He was fighting out there every single day, especially that match with Ichi Nojo. Getting 7 wins was a triumph. Hey, dude, attaboy. And speaking of people from the Isagahama stable, Nishiki Fuji. Last tournament ended up with three Fusen wins. I think a lot of us wondered how he would do while facing people for all 15 days. Well, he got another 10 and 5, so awesome on you, dude. Attaboy. Hokuto Fuji. Ooh. Started 9 and 0. Finished 10 and 5. Yeah. Uh, a bit of a collapse at the end. I'm not going to blame it all on the Henka. Hokuto Fuji is a very inconsistent rikishi uh and he just doesn't have the same sort of discipline that a guy like tamawashi does which is why when a guy like tamawashi manages to sort of pull that inside straight and have that perfect tournament he ends up with 13 and 2 whereas opposed to hokuto fuji there is a little more of an error bar each way on that i think and he ends up in a best case scenario with maybe a 10 or 11 win top ceiling but still a 10 and 5 is impressive i hope this bumps you back up into the joy good job hokuto fuji and another attaboy here for Wakamoto Haru, 10 and 5, not quite as good as his younger brother, but middle brother seems to be forming a nice little lane there in the lower joy top of the Maegashira ranks. Interested to see if he has another gear left to Asumo to maybe push him into Sanyaku discussion. And Ryuden. Add a boy. All right, so I wasn't sure which way this one was going to go. I thought he had some of the widest error bars of any of my predictions in the last video. So Ryudin answered a few questions. He came back very, very strong. He came back looking very ready to fight Makauchi level talent, getting double digit wins and a share of the Jun Yu show. All right, buddy. Let's see where you go from here, because, I mean, obviously he topped out at Komasubi once. But let's see where, in this different sort of pillowy soft middle of the Banzuke, where his true talent level ends up putting him. And some attaboys from Judio. Tochi Musashi wins his first Jurio tournament ever. Uh, not just winning it, it was his first one. You may remember him under his previous ring name, Kano. He's now moved over to Tochi Musashi, a totally baller Shikona. And also down there... Kin Bozan. Very wrong about him. I did not expect him to get a Kachikoshi, let alone 10 wins for a piece of the Judio Jun Yu show. I am very excited about the bottom of the Jurio ranks right now. Uh, all of the double digit winners in Judio came from Jurio 11 or below. So it seems to me that a storm is brewing in Jurio and it's largely coming from the bottom up and they are young and hungry. Look out. Now let's see who might be taking that midnight train to Judeo. Yeah, 
Now, of course, in the promotion demotion picture, it's not enough just to have people who are worthy of promotion or worthy of demotion. The numbers have to add up. So this is going to be an interesting one. I think we have three definites who are going to be taking the trip down. And they go right down the list, 14, 15, 16. Yutakiyama with a 4 and 11 at Maegashira 14. Tsurugisho with a 5 and 10 at Maegashira 15. And Mitoryu with a 5 and 10 at 16. Now, ah, those, those are pretty bad. They got to go down. Now, we have two maybes who might be going down as well. Uh, the first one I want to talk about is Hirado Umi. Now, he's 16 east, bottom of the Banzuke. He got a 7 and 8. Now, as I've said before, in certain cases, Chiyoshoma, that will not end up getting you demoted. Sometimes you will hold serve right there. So that's not necessarily going to drop him down to Judio. The other guy who might need to worry is Teratsuyoshi, a 6 and 9 at Maegashira 15. The question is, who do we got coming up? And unfortunately, like I mentioned before, most of the Judio dominance came from 11 and below. So who's coming up? Well, Azumaru at Judio 2 and Kageyaki at Judio 4 had 9 and 6. I think that is going to be enough to safely get them into Maegashira. And since we have three that are definitely coming down, the next in line is Atami Fuji, 8 and 7 at Judio 3. Now, I predicted a 9 and 6, 8 and 7, close enough, and it's not insane to think he's going to get that promotion from 3 up to Maegashira, now 16. Now we have two 8 and 7s at Judio 3 West and 4 West. That's going to be Tohakryu and Bushozan, both with 8 and 7. I mean, if Atami Fuji is a stretch at Judio 3 East, guys who are ranked below him at 8 and 7, ugh, I don't really see that one jumping up. Especially when I think we're going to have the same Sanyaku we had last time. And not the same people, but the same number. So I think... Maegashira 16 East will not be eliminated, forcing a demotion for Hirado Umi. So I think we're going to end up with a three-person demotion picture. Uh, and speaking of the lower divisions, congratulations to Tsushi Minada and Roga, who will be promoted out of Makushida. A name that is not on that list, Asanoyama. As predicted, Asanoyama did not go 7-0. He went 6-1, which is still an excellent tournament. He just didn't do quite enough to make that jump back up into the paid ranks. Quick sidebar. Now, some of you seem to think I hate Asanoyama, and I don't. I just want us to have reasonable expectations. At Asanoyama's best, he was never a Yokozuna-level rikishi in something that we've seen like in Terra Nafuji or Kakuryu or Hara Nafuji. Uh, I'm not holding him up to, to Hakuho standards, but he's not up to Kakuryu standards. We're talking about a guy who won one tournament with 12 wins from Magashir 8, not facing a full slate of Sanyaku, did not face Hakuho. He then had another 12 and 3 at Ozeki, where he did not face Hakuho and lost to Terra no Fuji in that tournament, which tells me pretty much he was not quite at the level of Terra no Fuji when he was making his return back up from injury. In order for Asanoyama to be in sort of the Yokozuna discussion, one of two things has to have happened in the past few months. Asanoyama's 28, he's still in his physical peak. He has always had the learning computer mentality. Perhaps he just needed a chance to go down to the minors, as it were, work out a few kinks, come back even stronger, well-rested, to dominate the top division. Or conversely, the top division has gotten old and creaky and the people who used to give him trouble are no longer necessarily in the picture. I have gone on record as saying I think we have seen the best sumo we are ever going to see out of our current Yokozuna and Ozeki crop, and I stand by that. That may not be the case for Asanoyama. So if he comes up and a combination of those two factors, he might be able to say, oh, this is a dominant rikishi who might be worthy of Yokozuna promotion. But that is not the Asanoyama we have seen to date. Maybe we should think of the gift of reasonable expectations. <laughs> So, uh, some of you news hounds may have heard, uh, Queen Elizabeth II of Great Britain passed away relatively recently. And of course, she was uh, the longest serving, uh, or at least one of the longest serving monarchs of all time. About 70 years she led her country, generations of Britons uh, under her rule, to the point where she is almost synonymous with her homeland. Uh, and now we have Charles. Charles? Don't know much about the guy, but it's just like, I feel a little bit bad for him because there is no possible way he is ever going to be able to live up to his mom. His mom 
had been queen since World War II up until now, 70 years. The man is 72 right now. He's not gonna make it 70. So there is always going to be, I think, some sort of unfair comparison of Charles III to Elizabeth II, simply because he's not going to have the time to make his mark as she did. Now, Hakuho, the greatest of all time, had an incredible longevity run. And now we have Terunofuji, who through no fault of his own, as the sole Yokozuna, is going to be unfairly compared to the greatest of all time who immediately preceded him. Now, Terunofuji certainly doesn't need validation from me, uh, but I certainly believe he's passed the threshold of Yokozuna. He has earned the title. He has six tournament wins, and I think in the absence of a Hakuho figure, he would have three more, putting him in the upper half of, of Yokozuna. But unfortunately for Terunofuji, I think his reign is mostly going to be defined by people looking past him and to seeing who the next great monarch might be. I think we're a couple years away from having true dominance again in sumo. I think we're going to have a lot of tournaments like this one where uh, a lot of good people are going to have a shot at the title and 12 or 13 wins might be able to do it. And I think a lot of these tournaments are not going to have a dominant Yokozuna type figure. Like I said, I think it's going to take a couple years for someone to get to the point where we can say, it's that guy versus the field, or even it's like, it's that two or three guys against the field. Uh, we're still figuring a lot of stuff out and a bunch of young guys have yet to get the, the reps in to really know what they're capable of. Terunofuji's not Hakuho, and that's totally cool, and I'm totally excited to see who the next Terunofuji might be. Thank you for tuning into the Dohyo. Uh, we are going to have our Shadow of Hakuho preview. Uh, we have our coverage of the November Basho coming up, including my bolder predictions, and of course, after that sumo year in review, you're gonna wanna come back for that. All right, everyone stay safe, stay strong, stay healthy, and I will see you next time on the Dohyo. Yeah.